Parts of Southeast Asia are in the midst of a widespread heat wave. In Thailand, the mercury surpassed 45 degrees Celsius. 45.4 degrees Celsius, a new high, even for a country accustomed to hot weather. It's the hottest week ever on record in Thailand, capping off a month so intense that the heat index here in Bangkok has surged past 50 degrees Celsius, or 122 Fahrenheit. We've been laying low, at least as much as we can. But today, we're stepping out into the sweltering Bangkok sun. Because while it might be unusually brutal outside, Thailand does have a couple hundred years of practice figuring out how to stay cool. There are dishes and snacks, drinks and desserts developed through the years for just this type of weather. And we wanted to find out what those were. So we're throwing ourselves into the fire, almost literally, to take a walk across Bangkok's old city and see what we might find. We're looking for anything that'll keep us going, the hot weather foods that sustain Bangkok on the very worst days of the hot season. All right, it's 9.07 in the morning. We've been here since about 8.45, but we have to set up the gear. Um, it is 32 degrees outside with the heat index of 40. Right now at 9.07, 32 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit is 90. And a heat index of 40 means right now it feels like 104 degrees outside. And it's nine o'clock in the morning. Um, Jasper, give me the camera for a second. I'm gonna show you how Jasper's doing at this point. Jasper and I met to start our Quixotic quest at Nanglung Market with a dish called Khao Che, which is probably the oldest hot weather dish on record here in Thailand. We met here because Nanglung is basically at the northern edge of the old city, and our plan was to walk the four kilometers to where the palace meets the river. But it didn't hurt that this route started with this, a dish made of rice soaked in chilled jasmine water with sides like fried balls of shrimp paste and candied turnips, something specifically known as a meal eaten to stay cool. Now the idea of food meant for hot weather is actually not an unusual concept. Things like Lebanese tabbouleh and Italian caprese salad, those were meant to be refreshing in the warmest months. Same thing with cold soups like gazpacho and chilled borscht. And here in Southeast Asia, there are things like Vietnamese spring rolls meant for, well, spring, which is actually the hot season before the summer rains arrive. Since the earliest days of recorded history, cultures in the tropics have been creating ways to stay cool. And with miles to go in record heat, we'd need every bit of whatever we might find here to keep us going. All right, uh, we didn't really need to go the wrong direction, but I wanted to at least start authentically at the border of the old city. So across that canal is sort of what's considered to be modern Bangkok. Uh, I'm gonna check the temperature real quick because right now after leaving Nang Lung, it is 9.33 in the morning. The sun's out, that's not good. It's 33 degrees, which in Fahrenheit is 91.4. So that's our temperature right now, not including heat index. Heat index is already over 106. And it is, uh, it's 9.30 in the morning. All right, there's gonna be plenty of time as we walk to talk about the heat. But first, let me explain where we are and why we chose this route. Basically, we're gonna be walking through three unique areas, all separated by canals. These three sections together make up what's called Bangkok's Old City. It starts here where we are at a canal dug in 1851 to accommodate the spillover from the original walled city. Today, this area is mostly residential, a collection of still intact neighborhoods dating back 100 years or more. Although if we followed this outer canal to the south, we'd find ourselves in the famous Chinatown. 
If all goes well, after a couple kilometers, we'll make it to a second canal and then the man-made island called Britannicosin. This was Rama I's walled city, and it'll bring us to ancient temples, old restaurants, and the backpacker party spot known as Kausan Road. And finally, there's the last canal and the first palace of the modern kingdom. Then the river, and hopefully for us, somewhere with air conditioning, because just a few blocks into our walk, the heat was already getting real. It does not matter what 7-Eleven sells. They could literally sell anything. The secret to their business in Thailand is that they keep the temperature at like, see in Celsius, like 12 degrees. Fahrenheit, it's like just above freezing. Always, doesn't matter when. You walk in and oh my God. ร้านร้านเหล่าต้องกินอาหารเย็นๆนะครับอาหารหรือของว่างมันอาหารมันก็มีแต่ของร้านๆน่ะนอกต้องเป็นของหวานอย่างเงี้ยหลังอาหารเ
and here in the shop house district of the old city. Well, we didn't have to look hard to find one. ร้านอาหารจีนไหลหลังครับคุณพ่อมาจากเมืองจีนแล้วก็เริ่มทําธุรกิจร้านอาหารเนี่ยตั้งแต่ปี this is a place I've been meaning to try for a long time, but I've never actually been here. It's called Hua Hin Po Chana, and uh, so it's the food of southern coastal Thailand, Hua Hin. But the family that opened this place 70 years ago is Hainanese Chinese. And so there was a Hainanese community in Hua Hin. Part of that family came back to Bangkok and opened this restaurant. So it's a really unique style of food that has a ton of history. This menu hasn't changed in 70 years. This is beef tongue, one of my all-time favorite ingredients. It's quite a famous Thai Hainanese dish. Uh, it's stewed with what I think is a tomato sauce, peanuts, and um, given with a side of Worcestershire sauce, which I've never seen before in Thailand. And then we have pork liver, another of my favorite ingredients. Now this, oh, there's the cold noodle salad, amazing. Uh, I see squid, uh, I see fish maw. Uh, we're gonna work, work our way through that in a moment. And then this one is Pad Sat Tal, which has nothing to do with anything other than the fact that I still can't walk past Pad Sat Tal without ordering it. All right, well, we're surviving to this point, and now let's get some lunch. เปิดกี่ปีร้านนี้เปิดมา She added a little bit of sugar to that. It's good. It's cold. Let's walk. <clears throat> Around 12.15 in the afternoon, about three hours after we started walking, we crossed the Banglampu Canal to enter Ratanakosin proper, the historic district of just 2.3 square kilometers that connects the outer old city where we just came from with the innermost section that includes the Imperial Palace. Here, the roads are wider and you feel like you're in a national capital. It's a place like nowhere else, a district that combines stately government buildings with gleaming ancient temples and a ton of old restaurants and preserved neighborhoods. It is crazy sometimes to realize that we live here. Walking around realizing that like we've you know, we're not that far from home. We just went to Nanglung, one of our favorite spots, had a little walk down here, and now we're surrounded by a part of the city that I really don't go to that often because it is kind of the touristy part of Bangkok. It's still pretty cool. I mean, even though we're here because it's a hot day and we wanted to, to take a stupid walk, it's pretty cool to be here, actually. I, I enjoy this stuff. 
You what? Sure. And what? Talk about anything? Yeah, I would have come here. I would have been probably in this spot. Completely overwhelmed, not knowing anything about anything my first time in Bangkok, which was now 13, 12 years ago. I had a backpack on that day too. It wasn't this kind of backpack. Unexpected street food. Hello, Pep. Ice cream? No ice cream. No ice cream. Ah, no ice cream. Stir fry. Oh, that's delicious. I don't really want a deep fried hard boiled egg right now, but it's delicious. That's all right, let's keep going. But yeah, this is Democracy Monument. We're gonna walk right past Methabalai Sorndang, actually, just next to us. I don't think we've been there on this channel. I've been there quite a few times. Oh man, the rare elephant pants, elephant shirt combination. I've gone from being a food historian to just, a, just another dude with a camera here, here in Backpacker Central. I'm out of my depth. Food looks good though. All right, let's continue to the place that we're going. It's starting to get hot. starting to get hot. It's 114 degrees. It's okay, just air conditioning. It's a little bit like being in a sauna where you just like, ah, yes, I wanted to find this. And look at that too, we got the uh, shaved ice. And this is like a secret sort of favorite of me. Of, of... I'm starting to not be able to make words. This is one of my favorite things. It's a Coke slushy. Do you want one too, Jasper? Uh, two. So let's, let's see this. So the way this works is it literally is like, it's just Coke. It spins it in ice to freeze it. Not quite frozen, but whatever, it's cold Coke. Ritanicosan Island might sound like a tropical paradise like Phuket or Koh Samui, but it's not really an island. It's just a part of Bangkok set apart by a canal, the one we crossed a little while ago. This is where, in 1782, King Rama I established a new kingdom and named this territory Krung Ratanakosin in Ayutthaya, lengthened just a bit in the early 1900s to the current official name, which is thankfully more commonly known as Bangkok. Anyway, there's nowhere else quite like Ratanakosin today. This is where, in tight proximity, you'll find the party bars of Khao San Road, the narrow alleys of the old Chinatown, venerated temples and glorious palaces and lots of stuff that we've shown you on the channel before, like Masaman Curry at the Chakrabong Mosque and the oldest sriracha shop and even our favorite American fried rice. But what you won't find here are any restaurants that date back to before the 1900s. And that's because other than the palaces and the temples and a few surviving structures, pretty much everything here was rebuilt when roads replaced canals in the years of King Rama V. 
Now, obviously, the food today is going to look quite different than it did back then, and most of what we consider summer dishes either weren't accessible without refrigeration or hadn't yet filtered out from the palace kitchens. But we do know one thing that was eaten in hot weather since the earliest days of the city, and that is a dish with thousands of years of history, a plate of fresh Kanamjian noodles served with herbs and garnishes that all just happen to be, according to the principles of yin and yang, among the most cooling foods in existence. What really cools me down is a plate of Kanam Jin. Um, we've got the fresh herbs, the, the holy basil. They use water morning glory here, which looks like it's blanched, which is an amazing addition that you don't always see with Kanam Jin. Cabbage, pickled mustard greens, bitter melon and uh, mung bean sprouts. So, tell me about these two. What do we have? Yes, uh, this is a uh, nam ya ka ti. Uh -huh. Nam ya ka ti, uh, uh, which, uh, ka ti and luk shin pra. Tham mai mai. Tuk wan le na ka. Lak ka ani ka kue mai wan. Pen nam tik. Sai tua. Mang sa virat ka tan dai. Mai mi ne sat. You can see why people take a siesta after lunch, just lying down for a nap, because that's all I want to do right now is just sleep. Mm. I'm glad we came here though, this is really good. For thousands of years, humans have found ways to store ice to stay cool in the hot summer. But it always meant harvesting ice in the winter, which meant having a winter. The story of how ice first arrived in the tropics begins a lot more recently. In 1806, a New England businessman named Frederick Tudor built a warehouse for harvested blocks of ice, then loaded up a ship using sawdust as insulation and sailed it to the West Indies. In transit on the water, the ice survived the journey but then melted as soon as it was unloaded because there were no ice houses in the West Indies. So he tried again the next year, this time after building a storage facility in Cuba. There he began selling ice and keeping enough in the cargo hold to preserve fresh fruit on the journey back north. Tudor's trade expanded in the decades that followed and in 1833, he successfully transported a shipment of ice to India, kicking off trade that would see shipments fan out across southern Asia. It was most likely sometime around 1840 when the first ice boat would have arrived in Siam. By the 1880s, technology had emerged first in Australia, reliably producing ice from a machine. And this man-made ice finally made it possible to produce it, not just import it, in warm climates. Thailand received shipments from Australia, then Singapore when a factory opened there, and finally, around the same time the country modernized in the 1910s, it was made right here in Thailand. And almost immediately, in one of the hottest countries on earth, the local people here fell in love with a brand new delicacy, a frozen dessert made from fresh coconut milk, one of the world's most refreshing treats and something still produced by hand in a 1905 shop house in the heart of Bangkok's old city. Our next stop was the idea that launched this whole video. If it wasn't for this next stop, this video wouldn't have happened. The idea came from coming here. I've been walking for five minutes, I'm dead. This is a, this is a, a masterpiece, every ball of this. And, uh, mm, man, it's just unbelievable how good this is. I, I would easily, easily, easily call this 
my favorite ice cream shop in the world, and it's not close. I don't have a number two. Like. คือเริ่มต้นเลยค่ะเป็นคุณยายคุณยายทำไอติมมะพร้าวอ่อนไอทำทำไอติมเป็นที่สดแล้วตัวเองเนี่ยมาสืบทอดก็ค่อยๆเพิ่มเพิ่มเพิ่มเพิ่มมาจนกลายเป็นวันนี้12รสโอเค we're hot and it's been a long day but I want to give this the justice it's due this is a place called Not a Porn Coconut Ice Cream and in a tiny neighborhood jammed with famous old restaurants This might be the most iconic. It's been open for more than 80 years, and for about a dollar, you can still get something made by hand without any additives, exactly like it would have been when it first emerged in the capital. Like it's literally made by taking blocks of ice and salt, putting a wooden bucket in the middle, and then stirring coconut milk until the edges start to freeze and continuing to churn until it has the right consistency. This shop sells 12 flavors today, but if you want the classic, just get a scoop of coconut, throw on some mung beans, and maybe a bit of sweet sticky rice, and enjoy one of the best things you could possibly eat on a hot day. It's got a lot of ice cream. It's a lot of ice cream. And before, it's a lot of ice cream. And we have to mix it all together. And then we have to mix it all. Do they still make their ice cream here the traditional way? Yes, yes, yes. Like, 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 Let's do a quick weather check. Thirty-seven. Humidity, sixty-seven. Feels like forty-seven. So the actual temperature right now is thirty-seven, ninety-eight point six Fahrenheit, and the heat index. Is 116.6, but thankfully, where we're going is like one minute away. Now we were just talking about ice and how it first came to Thailand. Well, one interesting note is that it was said that the first regular imports came from Singapore around 1900, because King Rama V wanted to eat cow che in the summer months. That dish of rice with ice that we had way back at the start of our journey, but that wasn't the version that he would have eaten at the palace. His dish would have been something fit for a king. Now we had about a mile left to go, and we were about to cross the last canal. And after that, there would be no more food, no more shade, just a long walk through the hottest stretch on the wide streets around the palace. But to fuel up for that final push. It just happens that there's a restaurant here that serves the royal version of cow che, the dish that's said to be the very best hot weather feast in Thailand. Gin, gin cow, first one cup, and then followed by this is pa, pa crop, thawed, okay, and then followed by this is head, head of the wind. This is the chai po. อันนี้จะเป็นปลากระเบนผัดค่ะอันนี้หมูทอดอันนี้จะเป็นไข่ชุบแป้งเป็นไข่เค็มชุบแป้งแล้วก็อันนี้จะเป็นหัวชัยโป้ผัดไข่แล้วอันนี้อันนี้จะเป็นหอมทอดหอมชุบแป้งทอดแล้วก็อันนี้จะเป็นกะปิชุบไข่ค่ะแล้วก็ทานกับข้าวอันนี้ก็จะเป็นน้ำที่สำหรับเติมแล้วก็มีน้ำแข็งก็คือเพื่อให้ข้าวมันเย็นแล้วก็ทานอันนี้ก็ทานได้นะคะอันนี้จะเป็นพริกหยวกห่อด้วยยัดไส้เป็นกุ้งกับไก่อันนี้จะเป็นเมนูฤดูร้อนก็จะมี
ออคนไทยชื่อคือชอบชอบทานข้าวแช่มากแล้วก็คือจะจัดแค่ถึงเดือนพฤษภาก็จะหมดหน้าร้อนbeaming right down on us so let's keep walking Driving through the Namibian desert, it's the only time I've ever experienced uh, what do they call it? The the you know the desert hallucinations when you think you see an oasis, right? When you're driving, walking, whatever. But for us driving, and the desert just on this flat road in the hot summer sun, and. Uh, And you think you see something. You think the city is right up ahead. You think something's right up ahead, and it's not. And it's just more of the same. And it's a real thing, you know. These these desert hallucinations. I feel like the river's right up there. It looks like the river's right up there. It looks like we've reached the end of the road. But have we? I think, I think that temple we see—it's actually on the other side of the river, which means we are almost, almost at our destination, which would be something pretty cool. It's after 4 p.m. We started today before 9 a.m. and it's a full work day. Well, okay, I know some people work longer hours than that. That's almost a full work day of just walking around in the intense heat of one of the hottest days on record in one of the hottest countries in the world. I would say Thai cuisine passed the test. We survived. Had some pretty great stuff. There's a lot, a lot of hot weather food that we did not eat today. We limited ourselves to the things that we found in the old city on the path that we took walking. Obviously, there are, there are dishes we didn't get to. This is not a comprehensive story. However, I think we did it. I think we did it. Let's see. Wouldn't that be ironic? That after surviving the heat, I get run over by a bus. Watch your step. Jasper, good job. We made it. Ah. 
I'm gonna go find some air conditioning. <laughs>